God's word for our meditation, as I mentioned earlier, it comes from our gospel reading. I'll reread a couple verses for us again. Jesus also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. And then again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. This is God's word. One unique aspect of Mark's gospel is that Jesus does things. Now, I know Jesus does things in every gospel, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but if you put them all side by side and you look at Mark's, Mark's especially is a gospel of action. We don't get a lot of Jesus going here and going there, but instead, Mark gives us the highlights. We see Jesus heal this person and tell this miracle, and go to this place, and go to that place. And after doing all of these things and healing so many people, Jesus started gaining quite a following in his ministry. I mean, after all, who wouldn't want to follow someone who can take demons out of someone or heal a broken arm? That's someone that you want to follow around to see what he's going to do next. And so at this time, there are so many people following Jesus, just droves of them, that he had to get in a boat and go out on the lake a little way so he could see everyone and project his voice because so many people wanted to hear what he had to say. And so we know from all the Gospels, Jesus is fond of parables. This is how he likes to teach, so much so that Mark says at the end of our reading, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So the basic way to describe a parable is that it is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus uses this a lot. But this doesn't mean that Jesus was trying to hide something from the people. Quite the opposite, actually. Jesus uses parables because using stories like that stick in the brain. It's easy to understand things when you hear them in story form because you know how the story progresses. And it's something that was applicable to the people, like farming. It was a thing that a lot of Israelites did. And so it helped the people remember the heavenly truth that Jesus was trying to explain to them. And so today, in the parable of the growing seed and then the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus is teaching them about the kingdom of God in a way that they could hopefully easily understand. And so when we begin with the parable of the growing seed, Jesus begins with a man. We would assume a farmer. And already, like I said, this would pique the interest of the the average Israelite because they would say, ah, yes, I garden or I know someone who does. It was just a common profession at the time. And so Jesus says a man goes out into his field and he sows these seeds to plant his crops. And then after that, it's just business as usual for the man. Maybe he goes to the market, does some chores around the house. Maybe he waters his crops, maybe he fertilizes them. He takes care of the animals and he takes care of his family. He goes to bed and rinse and repeat every day, day or night, Jesus says. The same thing happens with the man. And then as the days progress, the man sees progress. Little shoots come up out of the soil. And he's thrilled that his plants are growing. Does he know how they grew? He doesn't have the vaguest idea. He just knows that they're growing and that's good enough for him. And eventually those little shoots turn into a hardy stalk. And then the head grows on the stalk. And then the grain grows on the head. And then before he knows it, it's harvest time. And time to bring in all of the hard work and try to uh, help give him some money to collect his bounty. And then we get the parable of the mustard seed. And although it's a separate parable, we see a very similar theme. That's why they are put right next to each other. And so this small seed that we plant, although very unassuming, can grow to be something great. So in the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus again (laughs) describing the kingdom of heaven in a way that the people could understand. And he said, the kingdom of God is like this mustard seed. Now, mustard seeds are very small. I don't know if you've ever seen one before. Very small seeds. But they grow to be one of the biggest things in the garden. This would have been one of the smallest seeds that a typical Israelite farmer would plant. But it would be the largest plant in their whole garden. 
And they became so big, in fact, that they became ideal trees uh, for birds to come and nest and rest in its branches. But the point Jesus is trying to make is that when we plant those seeds, that's where our intervention stops. Yes, we, we can water them, we can give them fertilizer, we can make sure they have adequate sunlight, but they grow on their own time. We cannot speed up the process any quicker because only God can make a seed grow. And that's what Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is like. In fact, Paul brings up this very same point in his first letter to the Corinthians. Paul says, what after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. And that's the point Jesus is trying to make. And Paul hits the nail on the head in his letter to the Corinthians. Right? So that this truth that only God can make that seed grow is a very hard thing for us to grasp and for us to understand and for us to accept. Because we want results on our own time. We want results now. Right? Because that little seed of faith seems so unassuming and we might think, I need to help it out as much as I can. <clears throat> but all it requires is preaching the word of God to people, talking with people about Jesus. And it seems like such a nonchalant thing because it's just words, but it is powerful. And just that little seed with the help of God, with the help of God, will mature. And we can't be discouraged when we spread that seed of faith because Jesus tells us, yes, there will be hardships. You will throw that seed on some soil that is not great for growing faith. But with the power of the word of God, we can prepare more and more people for this harvest day when Jesus will come to take us to heaven with him. Now, I think this goes without saying, but, but we live in an increasingly impatient world. I think that's true. Uh, I just looked this up the other day. The, the average attention span of people today is a little more than eight seconds. I think it's 8.25 seconds. That's less than a goldfish. And goldfish are known to have horrible attention spans, right? But nowadays, that's the attention span of the common person. And everything around us plays a huge factor into why that's the case now. If our computers or our phones don't load something the instant we want to, we get frustrated. We want to throw the mouse across the room. Maybe we, we're so used to consuming content on Facebook or even on TV in these little bite-sized portions. So we just get a little bit and then we move on to the next one so it keeps our attention there. And maybe even sometimes when we're, we've had a long day, we want quick food and we go get food at Culver's or McDonald's because it's quick and you don't have to slave over uh, the, the stove for hours. And the same goes for planting flowers or planting seeds, right? They may not grow as fast as we like. And we want them to grow faster. We, we want to plant them, go inside, come out the next morning and have a full plant be there ready to go. But that's not the case. It takes time because they grow on their own. But we feel like we have to intervene because we are looking for that instant satisfaction, that instant hit of dopamine in our brains. And do you sometimes feel that way when it comes to spreading the seed of the gospel? Because I know I have. Right? We talk to someone either at work or maybe it's a close friend who is unchurched or maybe it's a, a child who has wandered from the faith in their adult life and we tell them, hey, just come to church. Or, or give church a chance again. Maybe this time it'll be different. We tell them what we believe and we plant that seed of faith in their heart or in their mind. And then we're hoping the very next day to get that phone call that says, hey, I want to learn more about what Jesus is all about. Or yeah, I'll be in church that Sunday, I promise. But that might not happen. And maybe weeks go by, months go by, years go by, maybe even decades go by and we don't hear a, a peep and our sinful flesh, it wants those instant results. It wants that person to come to church and we get frustrated and we get discouraged when we don't see results of our hard work. We struggle with that and we think, maybe God's not doing his job. 
Maybe I should do more if I'm not seeing the results that I want. I mean, and look at this world. How corrupt it is. How many people are falling away from the faith? What's God? Are you sleeping up there, God? Hello? We, did get, we get discouraged when we don't have droves of people pounding on these doors after we send out a mailer. <laughs> we want to see results and we want people to come to church and hear more about Jesus. And maybe we start thinking, well, maybe we need to spice up the message a little bit with some uh, holy fertilizer to get more people in the doors. Maybe that's what we need. We want every seed that we plant to grow quickly. What we can't understand, we do not fully understand how that works. I don't understand how some faith in a person's heart can grow into a mature faith that produces fruit. I don't know how that works. Only God does. Because our only job is to sow the seeds. God does the rest. And we have to trust that he will. Because when we plant that seed of faith in someone's heart, it seems so unassuming. It's so small. It's something so little. Maybe it's just a comment that we make. But it will grow by the power of God in his own time. And when it does grow, we cannot be more thankful. We don't take the credit because God's the one that makes it grow, but we are so thankful. And maybe that person we talk to finally does come to church. They finally want to have a deeper conversation about Jesus. And we praise God. God for that. But we have to praise him especially because he did the same thing to us too. We were once someone who did not know Jesus, whether it was when we were an infant or maybe later in life. And it is no less a miracle that God brought you to faith through the power of the gospel and through the power of baptismal grace. Your faith is a miracle too that started out as just a little seed of the gospel. So if God can do that with you too, who's to say that he can't do it with anyone else in his own time? Because God will use that small seed to advance his kingdom on earth and will cause it to mature and cause it to grow in him until that harvest day comes. And during our lives, as we looked at a few months ago, God prunes us and we continue to grow and we become the best version of ourselves that we can be in God and we produce better fruit when he prunes us and we spread the gospel and then when our time comes, God takes us to be with him in heaven. And even if, if, even if according to our own estimation of things, that, that harvest is too soon or God took that person from us or God is taking us too young, God has seen that seed achieve maturation, and will intentionally harvest that seed to rest from its labors in heaven with him forever. And that's the goal for all of us, right? To get to the point where Jesus takes us to be with him in heaven when we have become fully mature in the faith. And we can only do that with God's word. Because God's word is the power in this scenario. Because the suffering and death of Jesus for our sake, for the sake of imperfect sinners, is a wonderful thing to hear. That is power. Nothing is more powerful than the message of Jesus. And we want to spread that amazing news. Does that mean that we are qualified? No, none of us are qualified. Not even I am. Does our sinful nature continue to make us think that we need to do more than we ought to? Yes, every day it will. But should that discourage us? Absolutely not. Right? Jesus, by his suffering and death on the cross, makes us qualified to spread the seed of his word. And as we spread the seed of the gospel, may God grant us hearts that trust that he will cause that seed to grow. Because God's word is powerful. He will cause his kingdom to grow as we wait for the harvest on Judgment Day. So as you go and live your faith and spread that seed, find rest as you sow and plant those seeds of faith and trust that God will take care of that growth. Amen. Please stand.